All right, let's go ahead and get started with uh, lab number one for event viewer investigation. Lab objective is to understand event viewer logs and how to filter events for better results. The lab will help listeners, sorry, will help learners practice filtering and working with event IDs that can help during investigations. Lab mission use the event IDs to help search for events and learn about their structure. Requirements, knowledge of event to log filtering and structure. So you're gonna need your Windows VM and your security.evtx file in the extra lab files location. So the first thing that they want us to do is to transfer our security.evtx over to our Windows machine. So let's go ahead and uh, get my file transferred here. There is my security.evtx. EVTX is the offline extension or where you export your logs uh, from the Windows event viewer. All right, so now that we have it, we want to double click this file and we're gonna open it up and we see that it has now been mounted in our event viewer. And now we see that logs are starting to show up here. Okay, so what they want us to do is to look for the names of three new users with the use of filtering event IDs. So basically once we're here, we want to right click on here and we want to um, take a look at the security log container and it says we want to filter the current logs and we want to look for event ID 4720. So if we do that, we just type 4720 in there and then we click on OK. Once we're here, we do see we have one, two, three, four, five, six logs here. And let's see, we're looking for account creation. So let's see what we got here. So we have, uh, looks like we got um, account name John. And let's see, what else do we have here? It says account was created. We have the admin. So the administrator account created an account named John. The admin, let's see, looks like uh, Bob created James and Bob created Emily. Bob created Robert and the admin created Bob. So it looks like maybe someone got their privilege escalated as an admin and they made the Bob and then Bob is now using his found powers to make Robert, Emily, James, John, and let's see. And then John has his account. John maybe has also uh, been escalated to an admin because John made the Diana account. But let's keep on doing some investigation here. So um, it says, next thing we wanna see is that one user was disabled. Can you tell what that name of that user was? So we want to, you know, maybe use a little cheat sheet here. It says, hey, what is what here? So let's do this. Let's go to Edge. And let's go to our favorite site, Ultimate Windows Security. And this is kind of the Bible of, um, of what Windows logs are. So let's go right here, Windows Logs Encyclopedia. And as you can see right here, uh, we are able to filter on events. And if we look at uh, event ID 4725, we can see this means an account was disabled. So if we go back here, we should be able to filter on this account. So let's go clear filter. And this time we're gonna filter the current log again. And we will look for that same event ID of 4725. Once we do that, let's see what we, what, what we got. So we do see that um, the user account was disabled. Looks like Bob disabled Robert's account. Interesting, interesting. So 
Next thing that they wanted to take a look at was um, brute force um, or attempts of brute force. And that's what we want to investigate. We want to investigate which user and which IP were under attack and if the brute force was successful. So one thing that we can look at with brute force is we want to look for event ID 4625. And you say, why 4625? Well, 4625 is indicative of um, failed logons. So if we look at right here, 4625, classic signs of a brute force attack. And if you have multiple of them, it could indicate someone's trying to, you know, dictionary attack you or uh, they keep trying with the wrong password. And that's what we're looking for here. So let's go ahead and go back to our event viewer. We're going to clear our filter. And this time we're going to filter only for uh, 4625. Look for some signs of uh, brute forceness here. So we'll look at that. We have a lot of attempts right here, all within a very a quick time span. And that's one of the indicators of a brute force is you got multiple failed login times within a certain time threshold. You can set this up via group policy. You know, it says, hey, if I attempt, if I see multiple failed login attempts, let's go ahead and lock this count out as best practice. But we can see, um, Got a lot of stuff right here. Looks like uh, Diana's account was wasn't wasn't trying to be brute forced, and then Diana, 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 Diana. So looks like they were really going after Diana's account here. And we can see right here the message is, you know, an account failed to log on, an account failed to log on, an account failed to log on here. So we do are we are seeing a lot of um, attempts right here. Okay, so let's keep on looking here. Um, so we got lots of failed accounts with Diana and all that 902. So, you know, we are, we are making our timeline here. We're seeing all these events right here. You know, it's important to like look at the time. So uh, 907 AM, you know, these logs, might be different on your computer based off your time zone, but on mine, I got 9.07 a.m. Looks like the first failed login attempt. But um, let's see if there were any successful attempts. And that event ID is 46.24. So let's go back to all event IDs, right? So we got 46.25 failed login is attempt 46.24. Account successfully logged in here. Super important to, to like take a look at that. And in our sims, we're often logging in both these things when users are successful, but also when users are not successful. So we're going to go back to our logs here. Just note 907 failed logons all the way up to looks like, yeah, 902 to 907. So five minutes of failed logons. For some reason, they did not have the account locked out threshold on here, but that's okay. This is for learning purposes. Let's go ahead and filter again. That's this time we'll do 4624. So let's see what the story is here. So Diana, let's see what we got right here. Log in, log in. See if we get some users here. User 32. System account. So let's let's do this. Let's search for uh, Diana along with the event ID. Let's let's um, filter this one, and we want to look for. Let's try to look for uh, user Diana. Specified username is not valid here but we're gonna keep trying here let's say let's do this let's say 4624 and let's see if i can do some finding here let's try this diana there we go now let's see what we got right here if we move this around 
account failed to log in. By next entry, and we have 907. Let me uh, find next. And it says, yeah, there are no more. But let's take a look at this entry right here. So there is Diana. There is our 4624. So we do know she was successful. And which the so what that means? Look at that. Uh, that means that the brute force actually succeeded. You know, we had what 902 to 907 failed logins, but at 907.44, she finally was able to get in. So you know, persistence paid off here. The next thing they want to look at is number five. It says users were added to the admin group. Which users and who added them? So. What we want to look at here is a very important event ID that you definitely want to be logging in on your SIM, and that is event ID 4732. This is the privilege escalation alert right here. Basically, it says an, a member was added to a to a security enabled local group, right? And this event is logged on domain controllers for active directory domain, uh, local salmon groups. And basically, yeah, this is something that we do not like to see because this is indicative of someone gaining privilege here. This is an example right here, right? You had your um, Bob added to the admin group. So now Bob is an admin. So let's go ahead and take a look at our uh, imported log here. And we're gonna look for something similar. So let's go ahead and clear our filter here and filter for 47.32. And look at there, we've got two entries here. Let's see who did what. A member was added to a security enabled local group. Look at that, Bob again. Um, Bob was added to an admin group. And then we got, uh, Let's see, we have, yep, right here, Bob, built-in administrators. And it looks like maybe some, there's, some, there's some evidence like John um, is involved here. I wonder if John added Bob to this account. So yeah, we definitely need to, or I'm sorry, Bob added John to the group, yeah. So, and then we got, uh, yep, admin Bob. So now Bob has the power. Bob uses power to add John to the group. All right, so uh, this is what you do when you're investigation. Now, normally when we have this stuff, we have all these things in like one central log place like Splunk or like Elk. And then all this stuff is kind of correlated for us automatically based off of these type of events and these type of events ID. So once you're doing this job, you're gonna to start to recognize and, and remember these event IDs. So next thing we wanna look at is for evidence of logs being cleared. And that event ID, of course, if you don't know what that is, now you know to go to ultimate window security and you want to search for um for that so this log is 1102 audit log you know was cleared something that you never want to see you always want to investigate that even if it's on like a a test uh domain or a test environment you know normal users never clear their log so it's always you know something you should investigate, even if um, you think it's in it's insignificant, go ahead and just investigate it because most times it's someone trying to hide their tracks. So let's go ahead here and take a look at 1102, audit log clear, let's see what we got. Let's see who was doing what here. Look at that, audit log was clear. Looks like an admin cleared their log at 829 in the morning here. Yeah, so there we go. That means all the other logs ahead of that were deleted. And then in number seven, we have the question, which new groups were created and by whom? Now, by now we know to go to Ultimate Window Security, right? 
I've been using this twist for years. And I know that that is event ID 4727, because like I said before, the more you do this stuff, uh, uh, it just kind of gets burned into your brain. So this one right here, it means a security enabled group was created. Again, um, we don't want that. And this look right here, it says um, global means that this group can uh, be granted access in any trusting domain, right? Uh, very powerful stuff right here. We don't like to see that unless there is an audit trail or some type of ticket that authorizes that um, activity. So we're going to go back here and we're going to filter our log. And this time we're going to look for 4727. I'm going to press OK here. And looky there. We have a new group created. Group name is students. And look right here. Um, we have John creating a group name called uh, disabled user. So we got two things here, right? We got the admin created students and then John created disabled users. Interesting. All right. And question number eight, the last question here, which user was deleted by whom? Yeah, of course, you know, accounts get created and deleted all the time, disabled. Uh, but oftentimes, like I said, you want to have that audit trail, you know, because users get provisions, users get decommissioned. And if there's no, you know, evidence there, investigate it. All right. So user account was deleted. Let's take a look here. Let's say, hey, who, let's put our money. Who do we think did it? Was it Bob? Was it John? Was it Diana? Let's, uh, let's go ahead and see what we got right here. So we have... 4726. I'm going to press OK here. And boom, user account was deleted. John blew away Bob. So again, Bob was deleted by John. Why? I don't know. Maybe they're no longer friends. But that is the end of lab number one, DFIR 09. Thanks a lot.